Hey everyone, my name is Ira. Um, this is the third video in a series about being trans, I guess. Um, this is a trans 101 from a politicized perspective, and today, or right now, I guess, we're going to be talking about gender. What is gender? What does gender look like? What does gender mean? Um, so, to begin, in the last couple of videos, we talked about sex. Um, and this conversation is going to start very similarly. In our culture, we learn that sex and gender are the same thing. You know, that we have male, we have female, we have man, and we have woman, right? Female means, like, you know, having a normative vulva or vagina, or, well, vagina is part, not all, right? Um, and so, you know, whatever yours looks like, mine doesn't really look like that. <laughs> you know, or in that, you know, in that being male means having <coughs> a penis according to a normative medical definition. Not everybody identifies, you know, a body part that may look like this as a penis, right? And not everybody identifies a body part that may look like this um, as male, right? So we learn that they, that these two are the same thing, that you don't have any choice in them and you can't move anywhere. It's just something that happens to you. You don't have any agency over your own body, right? And in a women's studies course, you learn that male and female do not always mean man and woman, right? So that sometimes, I'm just going to abbreviate M for male, F for female, M for man, and W for woman. So you learn that sometimes these switch, and that you can be a female man, or that you can be a male woman, that gender is a line, and that for somehow, for whatever reason, all transgender people exist in the middle of this dichotomy. And it's interesting, because one of the things that you'll learn about in a women's studies course is how we view men and women, males and females, as opposites. The interplanetary view of gender is in, like, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, we're from completely two different worlds, right? It's interesting that it's framed in, because, it's interesting because they talk about that and how it's problematic, how it creates this relationship between men and women, that we are at opposing sides, that we are, that it creates a war-like relationship where we are against each other as opposed to with each other, coexisting next to each other, near each other, and such and so forth. Um, and so, but when, but when they talk about transgender people, they put men and women at opposite sides of the playing field and stick trans people in the middle, regardless of the identity of the trans person, which creates this, um, this thought of, well, you're the best of both worlds, right? If you're, if you're not trans and you are talking to someone who is trans and you are trying to pay them a compliment and you say things like, well, that's awesome, you know, that you're a trans guy or that you're a trans girl because it's like you're the best of both worlds. That's not a compliment. Shut up. <laughs> just don't just don't ever don't don't ever say that again. <laughs> that that can, that can that can be a compliment if that's how you identify, but if it's not how you identify, that's incredibly incredibly insulting. Um so the problem with this view of gender is that it doesn't allow for any place above, below, beyond, in front, behind, and such and so forth. It's very 2D. Another thing that you'll find in a women's studies class is they conflate gender identity with gender roles. And so you'll see these things like lines, like this one represents your sexuality, this one re represents your gender, and this one represents something else, and then, you know, here's male again, and here's female again, and then you place yourself. Okay, well, my, or well, I guess in this case, for sexual sexuality, here's gay and straight as if those are the only two options, and then I see myself, you know, here, or and when I really see myself over here. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so it's constantly, it's constantly on a, on a line, on a flat plane that is 2D, and it doesn't allow for any complexity that, that naturally occurs within culture, that naturally occurs within ourselves and our own personalities. So, if I 
don't think that gender is a line, then what do I think of gender as? I like to see gender as a universe. Um, and so I, it allows for a lot more complexity. So if you were to ask me what it means to be a man, I would probably have a different answer than someone else, right? If you were to go back in time, in whatever location you're at, and ask someone what it means to be a man, it would you would get a different answer than what someone now would give. Um, if you were to go to a different place as to what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be whatever gender you are, you would get a different answer, right? Because gender changes, gender is fluid, because culture is fluid and language is fluid and human beings are fluid, right? So in that sense, the li lines are not very fluid <laughs> by, by definition. <laughs> um, so I like to think of gender as a universe, like I said. So here's a gender, it's like a, an amoeba thing or whatever, and this gender is woman. Right, and I like, to, I like that it's an amoeba thing um, because it allows for the complexity of woman as a single identity. You can be a woman over here, you can be a woman over here, right? And then there's like these little lines or whatever because gender changes in time and space. So this amoeba thing can move all over the board, whatever. Um, and then, I don't, I don't know how much you can see. Um, all right, so then here's another gender up in the corner. And we'll call this gender man. Right, and again, you can go anywhere um, between man. Man itself moves and shifts. And then there's another gender down here. And this one's going to be gender queer. Which is usually one word. <laughs> Um, and then there's another one up here, and another one over here, and there's an infinite amount of them, because I don't know all of the genders that exist, and I don't pretend to know, and, and I would like to know all of them, but <laughs> that's probably not possible, right? And so, let's say you identify as a woman, and you identify as a woman over here, right? If you're, you can, you can move. There's nothing saying that you can, you have to stay there. So you move, and then you identify as a man. Does that mean that you are the best of both worlds? Not, no. All right, so then, or you can identify here, which means that you don't identify with any gender. Or you can put your hypothetical feet in more than one gender and identify as both of these things. Um, or, or three genders, because, a star, because stars have feet and this star has three feet. Um, Oh, shoelaces, because stars are consumers, and they like to buy shoes, okay. <laughs> but yeah, does that make sense? There is, there's space, there is freedom, there is agency when we view gender as a universe, as opposed to a line, where there are, where there are finite ends, where, where there are, where there is the ability to be at an opposing side with another gender. When you view gender as a universe, there's no opposite. Um, because everything's constantly moving. There is, there, there are no dichotomies because there are a bunch of choices. There is freedom because nothing is stagnant. Um, on that note, I want to say that just because the concept of gender is not stagnant, it does not mean that our identities cannot be stagnant ones. And even, even, if we identify as a single gender our entire lives, that doesn't mean that, that that gender in and of itself doesn't change a little bit, you know what I'm saying? What it means to be a boy or a, a young man, the way that you express that, the way that you feel about that, will probably change with time. Not necessarily to say that all young people feel the same way or that all older people feel the same way, right? That's ageism. But, um, but that time allows for growth in general. Um, or allows, you know, for, <laughs> uh, di I don't know if digression is a word, but we can pretend it is for now. <laughs> but I hope that makes sense. If it, I, I recognize that this looks super convoluted now, but since having seen the process, I hope that it makes more sense. Um, if you have any questions, um, 
then feel free to ask. My blog is www.iradaltongray.com. If you want to email me, it's ira.d, as in dog, dot gray, G-R-A-Y, at gmail.com. You can comment below. You can send me a message. You can talk to me on Facebook. Talk to me however you want to talk. Um, as long as we start a conversation, you don't necessarily have to agree with me. Um, I don't expect everyone to, but I do hope to inspire people to think and to question paradigms. Um, so yeah, uh, and I will see you all later when I think of whatever the next video is going to be. Okay, bye.